Assassin's Creed 1 has sort of become a distant myth in the mind of the gaming industry, at least to many of those who exist outside of the core AC fanbase. It's usually regarded as some sort of proof of concept, a tech demo of sorts. The idea that this game is an unrefined first foray into the world of Assassin's Creed, an attempt that only came to its full force in Assassin's Creed 2, has kind of permeated through the public consciousness. Outside of the AC community, and the niche AC community at that, most people that I talk to have never even played it, nor intend to. Most of them came in through Assassin's Creed 2, 3, or the RPG trilogy. Even back in 2007, and I think that even a lot of you might not know this, when the game first released, reviewers didn't really understand what Assassin's Creed was, or why it would go on to win the hearts of millions of players throughout the years. Initial reviews were mostly mid or negative about the game. There are just far too many areas where the game goes wrong to really give it a very high recommendation. Assassin's Creed is the kind of game where you're better off probably renting it for a weekend than actually spending 60 bucks to buy it and own it forever, because you're only going to want to play it once, and you may not even want to finish it at that. For the full written review of Assassin's Creed, you can check it out on IGN.com. That clip was from an old IGN interview, and I know that IGN kind of has an infamous reputation for missing on its reviews up until the latest Star Wars game, so they haven't really improved in... 15, 16 years, but it did generally represent some of the sentiments surrounding AC1, especially when it came out and the director's edition hadn't come out, which added more content, more missions, more investigations. People didn't really understand nor get the hype that was building behind this game. Of course, by the time that the director's cut released, Assassin's Creed reviews were much more favorable as reviewers saw how well Assassin's Creed had done with the fans. But after AC2 released two years later, the game has kind of fallen into obscurity, with many people wanting a remake, but much fewer actually diving in and experiencing the game for the first time. The game that started all of this. And I kind of want to make a video to encourage anyone who hasn't played AC1 to give it a try and explain why I love it so much. And while I do admit that AC1 does have some outdated or rough aspects to it that I'll also discuss in this video, so do most AAA games nowadays anyways. Assassin's Creed took two ideas and made art with them. One of them, the importance of movement, came from the game's predecessor franchise, Prince of Persia. As many of you know, AC1 was initially conceptualized as a Prince of Persia spin-off game before becoming its own thing. And you can see some really cool demos online where they first pitched this game. And it's honestly kind of an interesting game that obviously would never get made today with the inflated budgets that games have and how important it is to have a bankable idea. But it was a very interesting concept. But eventually, obviously, it became its own thing. It gave us an open world to explore and let us explore it in a way that no one had ever been able to before. Everything in this world was accessible. Every wall was climbable, every rooftop open to us. The freedom we felt when rising to the rooftops was truly unparalleled by most gaming experiences that have been offered until now. It paired this concept of the importance of movement and freedom of expression within movement with a very interesting premise, to be an assassin, a member of a brotherhood of killers and freedom fighters who seek to preserve the free will of humanity in the face of a powerful order who seeks to undo it. Do you know how perfect a concept for a video game has to be for the pure gameplay mechanics of it to fit so perfectly with the narrative themes and philosophy of its world? To be able to introduce a premise, a pitch, an idea into an interactive, complex medium like video games that has to factor in gameplay, code, story, music, and a bunch of other things and have it make so much sense and dance so beautifully together is nothing short of remarkable. The concept of power and control of the ethics of pursuing your own ideals no matter the cost are perfectly reflected in the loop that we use to get through the game. Altair is an assassin, a very skilled one at that, and we often have to strike down many guards to get to our target. We have to do things that aren't quite ethical, that definitely leverage our power of information, our power of being unseen, always believing that the ends justifies the means, something that is questioned in the story and the lore. The idea of assassins fighting for freedom so perfectly reflected in the movement system. How free we are and how free we feel when running across the rooftop of three cities that have suddenly become our playground. To mimic and mirror that sense of freedom both in the narrative, not just sense of freedom, but the importance of freedom. Because bear in mind, when someone is designing a level in Assassin's Creed 1, you have to psychologically communicate to the player a desire to rise to the rooftops, a desire and intrinsic value in the idea of freedom that you don't get on the streets. That's a very difficult thing to do when you're designing a level that then you have to weave into the narrative and the gameplay. You have a fantasy of the assassin, the fantasy of the ghost in the shadows that doesn't fight fair and it explores what that means in a world in which information and power are so commonly intertwined. All these concepts are explored constantly, and I love nothing more than a game that is consistent. Regardless of where you are or what you're doing, 
that same core idea is being explored. I think AC1 is far more than just a demo or a proof of concept, which is usually what it's reduced to. To me, AC1 is a paradigm shattering, immersive and unmatched experience. The way this game makes me feel when I play it, and I know that I'm a bit biased with this, but the way it makes me feel hasn't really been matched by any game since. It features my favorite protagonist of all time, so admittedly, as I said, I'm biased. But every time I return to play it, I remind myself that the pieces of this game make a much greater whole, a much greater sum of its parts. It has a great parkour system that, despite the outdated animations, hasn't really been matched in terms of accuracy and player agency in the 16 years this game has been out in the market. Which, if you really think about it when it comes to the amount of technology and industry that has propelled the video game industry forward, the amount of investment, the amount of time, the fact that AC1 is still one of the best, if not the best, third-person parkour system in terms of accuracy and self-expression is pretty mind-boggling. The more time passes and the more even Ubisoft itself fails to properly develop a parkour system that is somewhat close in terms of re reliability and accuracy, the more it's evident that what these developers did in 2007 with this game is nothing short of extraordinary. The level design, again I've made a lot of videos about level design in the world of Assassin's Creed, but the level design in this game is truly wonderful. It makes the moments between the missions just as much fun or more fun than the mission itself. How you get around is a game within a game. It has a gameplay loop that I honestly love because every time that you're interacting with this game, you're having fun. Compare that to most AAA bloated games now that have such incredible distances that you have to cross to even begin a mission and the traversal system to do that is so boring that you're just kind of like punishing yourself to get to the fun when Assassin's Creed just purely gives you the fun. And this last part of what I love about AC1 is somewhat controversial. AC1 receives the same criticism in vain as Assassin's Creed Origins, in a way. It's the first game that will lay the formula for more complex games that have more variety and more developed systems. AC Origins received the same kind of criticism, that it was too simplistic, that it was too bare bones and that AC Odyssey and Valhalla improved on these systems. But like Origins, to me this is not simplicity for the sake of simplicity, it is focus. AC1 has a gameplay loop that knows what it wants from the player, and has a very good reason for doing so. You are a hitman in this game of sorts, a weapon at the mercy of its wielder. In the game you are appointed to nine men who you are tasked to kill. For each, you first need to go to where they live, that makes a lot of sense. Then you have to figure out how you get to them, that makes sense. And to do so, you investigate, you walk the streets, you follow leads, eavesdrop, steal, and you're just a cool assassin and you basically have enough pieces of the puzzle to know where and when your target will be vulnerable. This all makes quite a little bit of sense. Then, and this is something that most players don't know, the information you gathered can actually help you strategize your approach and entry to kill the target. Some missions give you notes with information or even blueprints of the building with possible entrances marked in. This is very cool, this is very focused, and something that most games I play nowadays can't say about their gameplay loop, it's very relevant. Again, I love games that make me feel like everything I do is relevant to the concept, to the idea, to the argument that it's making. I hate unrelated side quests that are just there to pad time or take the edge off the game, be a little bit humorous. I'm not saying that I don't want humor in games, but I definitely don't like when a side quest is so detached from the style and scope of the overall game that it just feels like I'm taking a break and my immersion is shattered. I hate gameplay that is antithetical to the protagonist or the story. Of course, I'm not saying that this game is objectively perfect. It's an old game and it was on a limited budget with a limited idea of what you could do. It's not perfect. To me it is, but it has many flaws that I couldn't argue against in a conversation with a real human being. Not that I ever have those. AC1, everything about it works well together, but there's a lot left to be desired. Of course, I'd like better animations. By now the textures are a little bit outdated. The art direction is great, but the graphics are just not what they used to be back in 2007. The climbing is too slow, and a lot of people say that you just have to do side ejects and more complex parkour to get around it. But I heard someone say in a podcast, I don't remember which one, they said that if you have to avoid a mechanic for it to be good, it's not a good mechanic. So the climbing is too slow and definitely was improved by Assassin's Creed 2. There's a lot of things with the voice acting that I have to admit, even though I love Altair, the voice actor for AC1 is, is not good, or at least he doesn't do a good performance, because I've seen his reels, I've seen him as a voice actor professionally, and, and he's extremely talented, so the performance in AC1 is not that good. Obviously there's no cutscenes in AC1, and it could do with a lot more mission variety as long as it stayed the course in what it was trying to do, as long as they remained investigations, as long as they remained relevant with the game. So no, I'm not going to stand here in this video and tell you that Assassin's Creed 1 is perfect or that it comes close to perfection. I just want to tell you that Assassin's Creed 1 is a game worth experiencing now. 
not when it has a remake, not when someone does a remaster or ports it over to Unreal Engine or some AI machine can make it 10 times bigger and include a fishing minigame and side quests and fucking dialogue options or whatever the fuck people are into now. This is a game that is good enough now, that was good enough then and will always be good enough because it has something that most games nowadays don't have. It has something that most projects across media, across entertainment, across the world don't have. And that is a good idea. And Assassin's Creed 1, in my opinion, past all the fanboy bullshit that I give you, past nerding out, is just an example of what happens when a talented team has a good idea. And if you want to know of another franchise or another game that worked with the same concept, that worked with the miracle of a good idea, I made a video about Dishonored, which as an Assassin's Creed fan, you might not be interested in, but I think that you'll find something valuable in it. So if you want to watch that video, you can watch it now.